Barbie Souls, welcome back to my channel. This is Charlotte with Happy Twins 1111. I am so delighted to wish you all a happy new year. I hope you enjoyed the festive period and this year is a number six year, which is a number of love. So I think there are good things in store for all of us. And I don't know about you, but I was glad to see the back of 2021, which was a number five year. It was a year of transition and change and higher learning. Definitely very tumultuous. Change is always uncomfortable. Um, but hopefully we've got a smooth and easier time ahead of us. I'd love to know in the comments what your plans are for 2022 and also how you fared in 21. I think most of the people I've done private readings for in the last couple of months definitely had found 2021 a struggle, but... There's a much bigger audience here. Let me know how it was for you guys and what you're expecting this year. Anyway, I'm back again. I know I've not been very regular lately, but the readings just haven't been flowing. But today I am guided to read for you. It's going to be shorter than usual and there won't be an extended. Um, but I'm guided to do a, a how is your person thinking and feeling reading, which I haven't done for a long time. Now, I've got three paths for you to choose from. As always, there is no right or wrong way to choose. Just take your time looking at each pile, see which one you're drawn to the most. Um, if you're drawn to more than one, it just means there are messages for more than one for you. Pile number one, we've got the Appetite Stone. Pile number two, oh sorry, actually, let me show you the deck we're using. So pile number one, we're using the Joy Seekers Tarot. Um, in pile number two, we've got the Amazonite Stone and we're using the Midnight City Tarot. And in pile number three, we've got the Lepidolite Stone and we'll be using the Wandering Star Tarot. Now, I'll be using the Oracle cards and the charms and the message cards today. We're going to get all the nitty gritty details on how your person is thinking and feeling and what you need to know about that and how it can help you move forward. Remember, these readings aren't intended to be invasive or nosy. They're about getting the information you need to be able to reconcile what's happening or not happening between you so that you can move forward for the highest good of yourself and this connection. So take your time choosing. Timestamps are in the description box below. They're also pinned at the top of the comments and I will see you at your pile. Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the Appetite Stone and this card, which says well-being. We're going to read that in a moment. We are using the Joy Seekers Tarot today. Now, whilst I'm shuffling, I want you to take a deep breath and just close your eyes. Drop down into your heart space. And the goal is to think about a sign. We're asking the universe for a sign. This is the universe's way of communicating with you the most directly, of giving you the reassurance that these messages are meant for you. And a sign can be anything at all. It could be an animal, a name, an object, a place, a song. Um, it could be a god or goddess. Whatever works for you, there literally is no right or wrong. Um, and remember just to take the messages that resonate, leave what doesn't. These are general readings, so it's not going to fit for everybody. Um, we're going to use the oracle cards and the charms and the message cards as well today, so stay tuned. This will be a shorter than usual reading. There won't be an extended, but I really felt guided to do this How Are They Thinking Feeling reading for you today. I haven't done one of these in a very, very long time. So someone out there needed this today, and I'm happy to be of service. Don't forget to make a note in the description box of which pile you have chosen today because you may be called back to this reading at a later date and you'll know which pile you've watched already. YouTube has a habit of recommending videos you didn't watch entirely again, usually in perfect divine timing, right? I don't know if you notice that, I certainly do. Um, and also don't forget there is still time to sign up for my How to Stand in Your Power class, which starts on the 15th. It's a one-off workshop about how to find your power. I know you hear readers say it all the time, stand in your power, get in your power. A lot of people don't know what that means or how to achieve it, but it's a game changer. I really wanna share what we've learned. It's priced really low at 11 pounds 11, because I wanted it to be accessible to everybody. So hopefully I will see you there. You can find all the information on my website, which is happysouls1111.com. Links aren't below. Also, oh gosh, I almost forgot, I will be opening my private readings only for a few each month. Now, if you want to be in a chance with booking a private reading with me, you must make sure that you are on the mailing list on my website as it's a hidden link. The booking widget is hidden on my website. It's only available to the subscribers of my mailing list. So head over to the website now, make sure you enter your email address because I will be making an announcement very shortly about those private readings. They sell out really fast and there will be a limited number. But let's do this part one. 
we've had a really good shuffle. What do we need to know about how your person is thinking or feeling about you? I'm going to get some cards first just to give me an idea of the context of the situation between you. All right, we have got the Ten of Pentacles. We've got the Four of Pentacles in reverse. We've got the Seven of Cups. We've got the Two of Pentacles in reverse. And we have got the Six of Swords. And the thoughts and feelings around this situation and you. We've got the Knight of Pentacles in reverse. Wolf energy there. For those of you who can't see these because they're upside down, we've got Heron. I think that's a Heron. Um, snake, Wolf, Butterfly so far. Ace of Swords in reverse with a Peacock Feather. Page of Pentacles in reverse. I believe that's a stoat or an otter. The Hermit, another wolf. And the Four of Cups in reverse with the goldfish. Let's get some oracle cards out on the table as well. We'll start with the Divine Animals deck. Okay, red crowned crane. I think that's what that might have been, a crane. One more. And the lynx. And from the Moonology Oracle deck, we have got the energy is gaining momentum. Don't let your past hold you back. Bring love into the situation, new moon in Aquarius. One more. A fiery climax approaches. And which one should we get next? Let's get these. This is the, the Power of Love Oracle. Self-love. Willingness. And individuality move these up slightly okay part one so in terms of the context of this situation i do believe the person you're inquiring about is married and already has a family um this is obviously very challenging for you there's the energy of um repair around that as well so even though this person i think is being very open very expressive with you um they're also very honest about trying to make their current relationship or scenario work this is someone who's divided or torn we see the four of pentacles here they simply can't let go of either you or the other person they feel very stuck there's a lot of guilt and shame and regret attached to this situation for this person and we have the seven of cups here you know part of their problem is that they do live in this kind of idealistic fantasy energy they think you know, I think they think the situation will transform on its own. You know, they think if they give it time, something will shift and it will make it easier for them. It's a kind of burying your head in the sand energy. It's a little bit um, avoidant, um, but they really don't know which way to move. They don't know how to make these changes or how to move forward, even though there's very much a, a, a desire to move on. You know, they do love their existing partner. I feel they're no longer in love with them. It's kind of, I want to describe it more as a kind of best friend love. They've been through a lot together. You know, they, they have a life together that they've worked hard to build together. So this person's very invested. Um, leaving relationships is never easy. You know, no matter whether we know it's the right thing or not, it's still a painful thing to do. And I feel like your person is very sentimental. You know, they are very, very emotive. Um, they're very connected to their feelings and they can't shake the energy of guilt and anxiety. They feel that they're, you know, they're not being um, faithful. Although I don't feel like anything major has actually happened between you. I do feel like this person's actually been restrained. This has been what I would describe as more of an emotional affair. And it feels like they've carried this torch for you for a long time. For you, it may have been an unexpected um, revelation, but it just feels like this person's very stuck. 
you know, they can't let go of you or their existing partner. And so it's more comfortable for them to spend their time daydreaming, imagining it's going to be okay, trying to juggle the two, but also being beset by this overwhelming anxiety around this situation. They simply don't know how to move forward with the Knight of Pentacles. You know, they're thinking that they simply don't know what to do next. They don't know how to be authentic and honest with their other person. You know, this, this partner or, or spouse that they have. You know, this is very much at the moment about keeping things under wraps. And with the Page of Pentacles in reverse, you know, this is someone that's not even looking at how to repair this, at how to fix this situation. Not the situation between you, you and them, but the situation between the three of you. You know, this person being involved with someone else in addition to you, they simply don't know how to face it. When I say bury their head in the sand energy, you know, it really is this case of, it's annoying me a little bit, actually, this feeling, because <laughs> it's like, come on, just make a decision already. But yeah, they don't want to. They're so terrified of having an ending. Um, and they, you know, even though they feel very, very deeply for you, and I do think there's very big love here, even though they feel that very, very deeply, it just feels like it still feels risky. You know, what if they leave their current partner and it doesn't work out between you guys? They've dreamt about you and fantasized about you so long. They're now worried that maybe they've projected this fantasy onto you. Maybe it's not real. Can they trust it? So, you know, they're definitely concerned. Now, they may have been quiet lately because we've got the hermit here. You know, this is someone that's very reflective. This is someone that's going in. And we see here with the wolf energy, you know, that lone wolf energy of having to um, move away from the pack to kind of find yourself and find your own way. And so they may have been quiet, but certainly they would have been introspective. It's come, it's sorry, it's followed by the Four of Cups in reverse as well. And so I do feel like they're coming to the end of that period of introspection of, I want to say seclusion, you know, perhaps they've been tucking themselves away. And, you know, I'm sorry to say it doesn't feel like they've actually come up with any solutions or any clarity. This person cares about you a lot. And the reason they're not moving towards you is not because they don't want to or because they don't love you, but because as we've described, you know, quite simply put, they are absolutely terrified of leaving the connection that they're in. And I get that this is a, a complete mind fuck for you. Um, you know, you need to unpress all your brain because it, it definitely feels like it's been a roller coaster and an up and down. Um, Yeah, this one, a fiery climax approaches. I do feel like, you know, you two may have been very discreet in your interactions. As I said, this feels like more of an emotional interaction than it does a physical one. But I do get this very strong physical and passionate energy from this card. The connection is definitely moving in the, this direction. And, the, you know, pardon me, the person is, um, the person's scared about that, though. You know, they are scared about it. Yeah, there's something in them that feels compelled to try and repair the relationship they're in. It feels like their attitude is, if I try and fix this, then I can say at least I tried, I didn't just give up. Almost like that somehow makes them a better person or it makes it okay. Um, it's kind of twisted logic, but they, they feel that they owe the relationship that, and yet at the same time, they haven't let go of you. Um, I think as well... It's coming through. You need to be aware that, you know, you may have wondered, OK, well, you know, if this person can can cheat on their current spouse or have this kind of emotional liaison with me, um, that has also broken down potential trust between you two. You know, there's always that question of, you know, you'll lose them in the same way you found them. Um, but this person is a loyal person. You know, I don't think that um, I don't think you need to worry about that. And I think actually I'm hearing that was the most important message for you to receive today because it feels like I know we're talking about their thing, thoughts and feelings, but coming to you, it does feel like that's your primary concern and that you're worried that maybe, you know, you've waited all this time for the love of your life and this person comes along and they're unavailable. And, you know, you're wondering if you're fooling yourself, if you're kidding yourself or is this feels safe. I have to say, I do think this is um, a very fated connection. You know, I, I do think it's safe. And actually the card here, 
is well-being. It's a self-preservation service to spirit, youthful experience. You know, there is definitely some kind of spiritual purpose for this connection. There's definitely a reason you two were drawn together. And as I said, this person's held a, a, a candle or flame for you for a very, very long time. The reason they didn't communicate it is I'm hearing there simply wasn't an opening in, you know to be able to do that um, and so it was kept secret generally speaking this person isn't good at secrets and this is why it's kind of eating them alive that they're stuck in this connection don't let your past hold you back south node and i think that's their fear you know this person yeah this is like you need to talk to them about the relationships they witnessed as a child so that you can understand where their ideas about love came from. They are actually very, very codependent. You know, they, I don't think they are, will necessarily recognise their trauma because they, it wasn't one big thing. You know, it's not like, oh, my dad beat me up or this happened. It's an amalgamation of lots of small dysfunctional things. And so they don't feel entitled to to call themselves traumatized so they don't necessarily see anything wrong with their perspective it's kind of you know they've normalized the dysfunction that they were raised with um yeah i'm sorry for my silence i'm just trying to tune into this you know, this person overthinks a lot. They are very codependent. They overthink so much because they've been gaslighted, you know, so often that they don't necessarily trust their feelings. They don't trust their own perception of things. They don't trust their own intuition. This is part of what makes this situation so challenging because even though they know how they feel, they don't trust those feelings. They don't know if they're doing the right thing. They constantly second guess themselves. You know, they're not confident enough to make this decision. You know, everyone talks about how difficult it is to trust people after you've been hurt. But we don't talk about how hard it is to actually trust ourselves again. You know, when we've had our our instincts, our beliefs and our convictions challenged again and again, when we've been lied to again and again, it kind of throws off that inner compass, that inner radar. And I feel that's what's happened with your person. They simply don't know um, what's right or what's wrong anymore. They can't trust their own in a compass and so you know there's a real back and forward here you know by nature they are a loyal person I feel that really strongly but yeah there's a lot of anxiety here as well you know this is a someone that is constantly what ifing you know you need to encourage them and it says here bring love into this situation you know just listening carefully You've got to challenge them to remember that those what ifs can be turned into a positive. You know, what if it is OK? What if it works out? If you're going to what if, if you're going to focus on the future, um, you know, you've got to be prepared to put a positive spin on it. The future hasn't happened yet. And so what ifs are largely irrelevant, to be frank with you. But, you know, this person's definitely got anxiety, which is a fear of the future. I think as well, regards this connection and why it's so difficult for them to leave is they can't make peace with being the villain. You know, they're, they're, they're by nature a very decent, loyal, kind-hearted person. They're so worried about what people think of them, their friends, their family. You know, there's a lot of energy here that's keeping them stuck because they don't want to be the bad person. They don't want to be the villain, you know, in this storyline. But it does feel like this is building. You know, we've got a waxing moon here. This energy is growing. It's moving you towards some kind of energy of completion. What's really interesting to me is we've got self-love and willingness come up here and individuality all connected to the energy of the hermit. And it says here you realise that love of self is necessary to love another. Now, I do feel that this is something you've been working really hard towards. I'm, I'm being shown a picture of you literally holding a horse and not quite grasping the reins. And horses are symbolic of freedom. You know, the, the horse carries us forward. But if we're not holding the reins, we're not in control. Now, that's not a bad thing. You're being asked to let go of the reins because the goal is not to be in control. And that may sound like a tremendous contradiction, but acceptance 
and surrender is the opposite of control. It's, it's allowing whatever occurs in our present rather than trying to fix it. That doesn't mean not making decisions. It just means about recognising that there are some things we don't have power over. Of. We only have power over ourselves and all of that sustenance inside of us that we need the most through the outlet. I don't think your person has learned this yet. You know, they're definitely willing to. We have this card here that says you're able to compromise in the end. The result is love. And that's really promising for me. You know, I do think this person's still showing up for you as a friend. They're trying very hard to be restrained. They do have a willingness to learn. But actually, it feels like you're both on this learning curve. You've learned, I want to say, a degree of self-love. You know, you're almost there. It feels like, though, that both of you has this codependent streak. And that's why this is actually so painful. You know, you can't let go of one another, but your person can't let go of this other person. So you're all stuck. You know, you're all hurting. Individuality. You know, again, this connects to the hermit. As we said, you leave your unique stamp of love on everything that you do. And I really believe that's reference to, you know, this stamp of... Um, love that you've left on one another's hearts it's strong energy you know there's definitely something deep and meaningful between you so let's see what the guidance is what you need to know about how to move forward with this i'm going to get some more tarot cards first and we're going to get message cards as well and some charms what do you need to know about this connection and how to move forward with it We've got the sun. We've got the queen of swords in reverse. Lots of butterflies coming through for you. That's indicative of change. We've got seals with the three of cups and the empress in reverse, which is the cow. And from the divine abundance deck, we've got non-duality and trust. More butterflies. Remember, that's the energy of transformation, metamorphosis. From the self-love oracle, we have ritual, healing connection, heart chakra, and the star, good fortune. Let's get some message cards. I trigger you to show you where you need to heal. It's not personal. I think about reaching out, but I'm not sure if you want me to. You say you want me and love me unconditionally, but you don't seem happy with who I am. I don't think it's so much who they are. I think it's who they're with, right? It's the fact that they're not available. Right, okay. We have... I'm going to say that's third eye chakra, even though I don't think that's the right symbol, but it's purple. That's what called to me. Um, an acorn. A clock. And the time is 7 p.m., 5 past 7. And an inhaler, which says breather, and the number 58 on it. Um, I feel like we need to get a couple more. Okay. We've got fake news and the party animal sloth. I do think your person is going to come through this. You're being asked to trust. There's all of these butterflies coming through, which are symbolic of transformation. The sun is about joy and happiness. And the sunflower here, everything about this card, you've got the bee as well, which is about community and collaboration. Everything about this card is happy. And it symbolizes a happy transformation. It's asking you to trust in the forward path, even if it looks scary right now. We've got the Queen of Swords in reverse. Again, I said there may be a period of no communication. If that hasn't already happened, it feels like it may have already happened and is coming to an end for some of you. But for some of you, that may be just beginning. And it does say here, I think about reaching out, but I'm not sure if you want me to. And so there may have been some agreement to kind of leave each other alone. You know, you may have said to this person, look, while you're in a relationship, you've got to kind of back off. Even though there's a lot of love and friendship here, it feels like you want to be there for one another. Um, it may have been a line you've already drawn in the sand or perhaps it's it's coming, but there's definitely this energy of non-communication floating around. And yet there's also this energy of togetherness. 
um, a, a desperate de need and desire to be together. And I feel like this is the universe saying, look, you are going to be. You know, if your sign was the seal, if you asked for a seal as a sign, that's a very strong message that you've received there. The Three of Cups is about uni unity, coming together, a collaboration. It's the energy of the Empress and the energy of creation, although she is reversed here. Now, when the Empress is reversed, we have distorted feminine energy. That's the codependency we were talking about. You know, you're being guided that this is still a block in your connection, that when you have two unhealthy people, it's always going to be painful and difficult, and you're not aiming for a healthy, balanced or harmonious connection. This is something that you need to resolve within yourself. You know, this definitely is what boils back to you. Hold on a minute. So the me this is a message, it might not resonate for all of you, but it's being abandoned or rejected during childhood. And I just want to be clear that being abandoned or rejected, it doesn't mean your parents left. It could mean that they weren't supportive. You know, your, your parents abandon you every time they ignore you and don't nurture and love you and support you in the way that you need. Or, you know, you can feel rejected when they don't show approval. Um, but this trauma, this abandonment, rejection trauma that you've holding on to is what's rooted in this empress in reverse. And the message is that it, it leads you to sabotage your relationships as a way to validate your fears, your abandonment and rejection fears. That's where you need to focus your healing. Now, as I said, that message wasn't necessarily for everybody. There's more. <laughs> yeah, you need to attract a partner that doesn't need to be saved, both of you. Right now, both of it feels like both of you need to be saved. You know, and yet if you're if you're constantly focused on people that you think you need to save, you're not recognizing your value outside of what you can actually do for a person. You know, this can be challenging. If you're used to saving others, if you're used to being the people pleaser, you know, all of your identity, your self-worth, your self-esteem is centered around that kind of giving. But again, this comes back to this self-love. I feel like you know this, part one. This is just something that you needed to be reminded of today. You know, it's really important that you recognize this. We've got non-duality as well. Let your authentic humanity shine forth while also bowing to the inner divine. You can become fluent at doing both. Um, there's quite a... Oh, okay. It's a determined energy behind this card. Spirit's being quite forceful here. They're saying, you know how to do this. You do know how to do this, but you must apply it. You must apply what you've learned and engage those coping mechanisms you've learned when you find yourself hitting the deck trust it says allow me divine to give you my deepest longings trusting you to know exactly how to handle them and remember those butterflies transformation is coming ritual healing connection this is a number six card remember we're now in the year number six with 2022 and healing connection and healing the heart chakra you know as guidance this suggests to me that it would really benefit you and perhaps your person as well to focus on that heart center as a healing pardon me a healing target i'm just listening carefully bear with me this is actually number 16 i'm sorry i missed the one there so that reduces um 16 reduces to seven which is a divine number it's the number of divinity again this is definitely a divine connection and you need to treat it and heal it as such is what i'm hearing bring love into that situation at an energetic level and you've also got the star here you know, this is the energy of, well, it's called good fortune here, but it's also the energy of optimism and hope. You know, again, this says to me, you can trust whether or not this relationship works out is, is not the point. The point is that you're being reminded that you can move through it and that you're going to be happy. Whatever the outcome is, that you're going to be well, it's going to be good, you're going to be okay. And that's what you needed to take the most. I trigger you to show you where you need to heal. It's not personal. You know, above all else, as I said, there's a spiritual purpose to this connection. But 
I don't think this person delib deliberately triggers you or in toxic ways. But I think, again, you know, you may have thought you were healed when they cropped up and they forced you to cycle back through all of the same experiences and emotions that you needed to, to actually, I guess, really recognise how far you've come, um, how much you've grown, but how much there is still to do. You know, it may be quite humbling to realise, OK, you know, I didn't realise I could I could get back in this place, this place of needing and codependence again. But it's really important um, that you recognise that, you know, it's by being self-aware and focused on those shadow aspects that you can continue to make progress. You say you want me and love me unconditionally, but you don't seem happy with who I am. Again, I had a flash of irritation when I turned that card over. I don't think it's so much that you're not happy with who they are as you're not happy with the situation they're in. You're not happy with their inability to make a decision. You're not happy with the way, I guess, the decisions and the choices and they're making and the, the actions they're choosing. And that's okay. I think this person needs to be educated on what unconditional love means. You know, to love someone unconditionally is to love them regardless. But loving someone doesn't mean you have to be there. It doesn't mean you have to show up. Um, you know, to love someone unconditionally doesn't give them a free pass to treat you how they want. Because, you know, there has to be certain conditions in relationships in order for you to love yourself unconditionally. You have to be safe. You know, every relationship has conditions. You know, it's like with your children, you know, love to love them unconditionally means, you know, well, children are like angry drunk people, aren't they? Two and three year olds, they'll smack you, they'll bite you. <laughs> you still love them, but there are conditions around, you know, you, you, you can't behave that way. You can't, um, which they learn and grow up to do. I don't know why I'm going on about children. I don't know where that came from. But the point is, unconditional love doesn't give anyone a passport to treat you how they want it. It's not a free ride. You know, there has to be healthy boundaries within any relationship. And I do think perhaps this person has misunderstood what unconditional love means and perhaps you have as well you know you need to recognize that it doesn't mean sticking around for something that hurts you you know that's self-love means to take care of yourself first as i said you can love someone safely from a distance um but you don't have to be present and i don't think this person understands this let's look at the charms for you we've got fake news the acorn the clock the sloth Let's start with the third eye. This person's awareness is opening up. It's expanding in every direction at the moment. They're not comfortable with it, is what I'm hearing. They find it creepy and weird. They're fascinated by your spiritual perspective and your spiritual dabbling, but they don't necessarily want to have a part in it. This is someone who is kind of, I want to say intrigued, but quite sceptical. And they, they fear, they fear their own instincts. Again, you know, they know, this person doesn't know how to trust themselves. A breather, again, this indicates that period of non-communication, the gap. Both of you need that. This situation, it feels like, has had become or is going to become too tense, too... Um, yeah, tension is the only word. It, it, it's tense and it's a it's a nervous tension. You know, it makes the whole body feel stressed and tight and anxious. So you definitely need to let your hair down, you know, to relax. We've got the party animal sloth. Sloths are slow, lazy creatures. But the fact that he's a party animal does suggest getting out there, you know, keeping busy, socialising. This, that time's significant. Numbers on the clock, seven and one. Remember, number one is the number of unity and self-love. And number seven is the number of divinity. Um, you know, so I do think that this is all about divine timing as well. You're being asked to trust in the momentum of this. Fake news. This is an interesting one. You know, there's definitely been something said, something shared that you need to be mindful of. Um, unless you've heard it from the horse's mouth, you need to pay very careful attention. Um, this has got a Chinese whispers energy about it. I don't feel anyone's deliberately trying to sabotage. It just feels like rumour mongering. You know, someone gossiping, things getting twisted. You know, and as it passes on Chinese whispers, it all getting distorted and mixed up. Just always make sure you wait to hear it from the horse's mouth. You're being asked not to trust things you've heard via the rumour mill. 
and an acorn, a little acorn, a seed, a new beginning. But there's a lot of growth here still to do. I mean, overall, part one, you know, your person is feeling very stuck. You're being asked to trust in this situation anyway. It was meant for you. And sometimes it's hard to believe that when we face difficult situations. You know, we think, well, why would the universe put me through all this shit? And it's because the lessons that we're learning through them are really important and really valid for our growth and our ascension. Um, you know, it's what we're essentially here to do. No one gets out alive without any stress or without any ups and downs. Um, that's just the reality of living and learning to become our best selves and um, being human. So it's not the case that you're being punished or deprived of this love that you so desperately long for, you know, but you are being asked to trust, you know, to step further into this energy of surrender. Again, non-duality, let your authentic humanity shine forth whilst also bowing to the inner divine. You can become fluent at doing both. I'm going to leave that there, but thank you so much for tuning in today. And thank you to those of you that have watched my commercials and adverts today. I appreciate that so much. It really is the perfect energy exchange and it really helps to keep my channel ticking over and to keep it growing. So thank you again for your time and for being here and for your generosity. I love you guys so much. It feels great to be back. Make sure you leave me a comment in the description box below if you enjoyed this. Don't forget to make a note of which pile you watch so you know for next time. And I will see you soon. Lots of love, pile one. Bye. Hello, Pile 2. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the Midnight City Tarot and the Amazonite, and your card is Violet Fire, which we will read shortly. But let's give these a good shuffle. And whilst we do, I'd like you to take a nice, long, deep breath, center yourself, and ask the universe for a sign. Anything at all. A sign is just whatever, whatever pops into your head. Just trust whatever pops in first. It could be an animal, a name, a place, a flower, a god or goddess, an object. There is no right or wrong. This just helps the universe communicate with you directly. It helps the universe to make sure you pay attention, pay close attention to the messages that are truly meant for you. Now we're going to use the oracle cards today as well. We're going to be using the charms and the message cards. We're asking how is your person thinking or feeling? What do you need to know the most about that to help you move forward? And we will, of course, get some guidance cards for you as well. Now... Whilst I'm shuffling, don't forget there's still a chance to sign up for my How to Stand in Your Power class. That's going live on the 15th of January. It's a three hour workshop. Um, you probably hear readers say, stand in your power all the time. A lot of people don't know what that means or how to do that. Um, and so I'm doing a little workshop. It's only £11.11 11 because I wanted it to be really accessible. It's a live video class, so I'll be there talking you through every step so that we can get you back in your own power or help you learn how to stay there. Perhaps you've already figured that out. And I will also be opening my diary for private readings. I've decided, because I've been doing some for the last few months, I genuinely enjoy it. I'm gonna keep it up and just do a few each week. So there is limited availability. I'm gonna be booking for late Jan, early Feb. If you would like to book, make sure you are on my website mailing list. My booking widget is hidden. It's only available to the people on my mailing list. I will be making an announcement within 24 hours of new availability. And once it's gone, it's gone. There won't be any more until March. So you can find the link to my website in the description box below. You'll find the classes there as well. And the subscribe to my newsletter or mailing list is on the front page. Right, let's do this pile two. What do we need to know about your person's thoughts and feelings? This is the Midnight City Tarot. I love this deck. It's a New York themed deck. Okay, I'm going to get some cards first to get an idea of the context of the situation between you. Okay, so we've got the star in reverse. That feels pretty hopeless or that's how you're feeling. Five of pentacles in reverse, fear of rejection. The sun, trying to look on the bright side. Four of cups in reverse, coming out of a period of solitariness no communication okay you probably haven't heard from this person for a long time this feels like you know you're kind of getting over it you're learning to kind of be happy with where you stand you know you're learning to come out of your shell a little bit you're coming to terms with the no communication but thoughts and feelings we've got seven of swords six of wands in reverse queen of cups the chariot the eight of cups i'm gonna go deep let's get some cards let's get the moon cards moonology oracle 
I love this deck so much. It's a new one. Nothing will come of this situation. Void of course, moon. What do you need to release? Waning moon. Time to take, time to breathe out. Take time to breathe out. Disseminating moon. Balance spirituality and practicality. Full moon in Pisces. From the Divine Animals Oracle. We've got Red Fox. And Cat Intuition. And from the Self Love Oracle. Actually, let's go with the Power of Love. Power of Love Oracle. Gosh, I can't believe it's getting dark already. Joy. Release and willingness. Okay, part two. It feels like you had a brief fling or interaction with this person some time ago. It never got off the ground. It never made it past go. And you've not been able to stop thinking about them ever since. I do feel that this person just checked out and they may have been quite ignorant in the way they did that. Perhaps they ghosted you, ignored you, didn't offer an explanation. There was kind of no closure. Um, as I said, with the star in reverse, this situation may feel quite hopeless to you in your present. Uh, I feel like you wouldn't dare approach them or kind of seek them out again. There's this kind of dramatic fear of abandonment here, uh, an absolute reluctance to letting yourself go in this situation. And we've got the sun here, you know, trying to focus on, this is that childlike way of distraction, pure escapism. You may have been socializing a lot, keeping yourself really busy, just doing everything you can, you know, to, to remain stable. But as I said, it feels like there's been no interactions here that this person hasn't been communicative and that things are somewhat stagnant or stale between you right now. In terms of how they're thinking or feeling, you know, Queen of Cups front and centre, this is definitely someone that cares about you. There is a lot of feeling here. The, the Queen of Cups is a very mature and loving energy. Um, and whilst they never actually express this, I do think that they recognised you as being a very pure hearted and very loving person and that they feel very warm hearted and loving towards you. However, it's not that quite, quite that straightforward. Of course, it never is, is it? I do think this person is a tricky character. We've got the Seven of Swords here, and this is such an interesting way it's depicted in this card. Of course, it's a card we normally associate with deception, but you can see here that these, this person, they've got four swords on their back, one on the table, and two underneath. And so the only sword that can be seen is the Ace of Swords, which is reversed here. Now, Aces are about authenticity and truth. The Four of Swords is about recovery and the Two Swords are about indecision. And so I do feel that this person showed up as authentically as they could. You know, their ignorance, their inability to be really honest with you or to offer you any explanation or conversation was rooted in this, you know, they're carrying this heavy load. They're still recovering from something. It's not an excuse. It's just an explanation. And actually under the table, the part that was hidden was that their indecision. And I don't think it was necessarily just indecision about you. I feel that this was indecision about them and relationships. It was indecision about love, not just love with you, but love in general. You know, it definitely feels like this person um, was running scared um, and they probably have a lot of very, I want to say shallow relationships. You may have seen them get involved with other people and you're kind of like, well, why them and not me? You know, if you're so anti-relationship, how are you seeing that person or this person? But you know, they're, they're getting involved with people that feel safe, people where it's shallow, that they're not diving in at the deep end and risking their heart. They're staying in relationships where they don't have to open their heart and they can live on the surface. Um, they don't feel good about what happened with the six of wands in reverse. I do feel that they carry a lot of guilt around about that. Um, there was definitely a strong electric spark between you and they very much admired your disposition. But I do feel that they were overwhelmed by your ability to express and show up and be vulnerable and to be real and authentic. There is a message here about boundaries and oversharing. And I do think that in the nicest possible way, it's not that you're too much. It's that at that moment in time, you were too much for them. You know, this person definitely feels, well, they intellectualize everything for a start. They don't feel like they can 
drop down into their heart space. You know, intellectualizing everything is when you're learning everything about the issue and talking about facts, but avoiding all of the emotions. And that's where this person is. You know, they're in this four of swords energy. They have those feelings, but this is Cancerian energy, the queen of cups. They're deeply buried. Remember, Cancer is, is hard on the outside, gooey on the inside. And so, you know, this person was unable to get down to your depth or your level. Now, you know, your feelings about them are valid. I'm not saying that they weren't wrong or, you know, they shouldn't have treated you the way that they did. But your perspective of this person and the situation is distorted by your own shadow aspects. And, you know, your own shadow, I feel, is very hidden in this situation. We've got all of these shadowy characters here. I think I'd say actually both of your shadows are very hidden. But you can begin to study your shadow by measuring the reaction of the people around you. And this person reacted. They reacted by not communicating. Now, as I said, in part, this was their own ability to get to your emotional depth and be authentic and have that conversation. But there is a message here about oversharing and boundaries. You know, oversharing is a lack of boundaries. And I think that's what's frightened this person. You know, when you overshare and you over talk, it's just a product of it. Sorry, it's a product of, of you having been abused as a child. It's your inner child literally still begging um, to be heard. But you can practice hearing yourself and loving yourself you know you don't think that will feel good enough or that you're going to find any respite in that but that's not true um this oversharing thing you know as i said you were so emotive and i it, sorry i'm on the fence here because oversharing is a strong word I, it's a triggering word and i don't want you to beat yourself up because that's not the point of bringing it up it's about recognising that sometimes when you rush in with feelings, in particular someone that's not necessarily ready to receive them, you know, when your timing's off because you're thinking about what you need to say rather than about what the situation needs, um, you know, it can sabotage things. And it is a form of self-sabotage. You're so fearful of him running away, you know, that you grasped on too tightly and shared too much. And so, you know, we do see that... It, they did run away and with the chariot here, you know, there there was a strong drive behind that. But I also think there is a strong drive towards you and they are looking. It says here there is a green light. I'm going to get a clarifier on that. Yeah, but you've got to stop beating them up about them having gone. You know, they're not a bad person. You've got to stop beating yourself up. You know, you've both been through crazy shit and that's how that's how you adapted to survive. And, you know, this person survives by walking away without a word. We can judge it all we like, but we all have dysfunctional coping mechanisms. This is theirs. They avoid the emotional depths. They avoid emotional intimacy. And even though there was a lot of love in their heart for you, a lot of genuine care, you came at them with this overwhelming, overflowing energy of love and expression and feelings. <clears throat> you might not have even said it, actually, but, it, you know, energy doesn't lie. Um, it was too much for them at that time. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to be too much for everyone, but there is definitely there a message there about oversharing and about learning to temper that, about recognising why you do that, about your own elusive shadow aspect. Self-reflection is challenging, but you've got to observe how people react and take some responsibility for how you show up as well. I do think that if things would have been different and moved at a more gentle pace, this person might not have run so hard and so fast. And so it's not about blaming you or blaming them, but you're being asked to not judge them so harshly for walking away without a word. Because, um, yeah, neither one of you was right in this situation. You both brought something dysfunctional to the table and you both reacted to it in dysfunctional ways is what I'm hearing. This person knows they're not good enough for you. <clears throat> and I would honestly say... I have. That's quite a harsh thing to say about anybody, but right now they're not. You know, right now they've got a lot of broken pieces which they don't know how to mend. You know, they've only just opened that box. We're seeing here with this Eight of Cups in reverse. They haven't taken anything out. They've not started to fix anything. They haven't gone on that inner journey yet. And so, you know, I do think that this person, even though they feel very driven, and again, I'm going to get a clarifier for this taxi card, the green light card. Um, I think they know the timing is off nine of wands in reverse so they haven't given up king of cups in reverse 
<clears throat> that's very attached energy this is distorted scorpio energy which is very attached it's very anxious um it thinks about everything it hides its feelings it's very mysterious again this is someone that's disconnected from their own heart space and so you know this green light they haven't given up if they get a green light and for them i don't think that's necessarily coming from you it feels like it's in a kind of inner compass that will speak to them <clears throat> kind of like a hunch of i'm feeling the urge or impulse to do this there's still something there in them pardon me i don't know why but i've got a you can hear it in my throat right <coughs> it feels like a frog in my throat okay what do you need to know about where this is heading let's get some message cards as well where is this heading what's shifting ace of pentacles seven of wands i'm real real with you part two i don't think this is heading anywhere right now the ace of pentacles is about no new beginning and you've also got release you have the ability to give over unwanted energies the loving forces of the universe and we have the seven of wands which shows someone you know walking into a crowd of unidentified people i guess the umbrella shields us from the rain and rain or water is representative of emotion and so it does feel like the universe is protecting you from this situation is shielding you from it right now this person isn't meant for you right now like i said they know they're not right for you they know that you have a big pure heart and that you deserve someone that's going to treat you like a queen and they know they are not the person to be able to do that right now. It's not that they don't want to. It's that they don't know how. There's a deep energy of self-loathing about this person. Release comes up twice for you. Nothing will come of this situation. Take time to breathe out. Balance spirituality and practicality. You know, you need to focus on you. I feel called to come to this violet flame card because it says transmutation, detoxification, psychic division constant distraction i do feel like you dream about this person that they're constantly on your mind maybe your twin flames and that connection feels very close but i want to reassure you that you don't have to be constantly distracted by those visions thoughts and impulses again my standing in your power class will really help you with this you know we we, we we tend to think that our minds control us that we don't have a choice in what we think or feel but that simply isn't true um, and the standing in your power class will help you understand why and how to recenter yourself and take your power back you know you are not a victim of your own mind and your own emotions and you're certainly not a victim of this connection and the constant bombardment of images or ideas or memories which i know can be so very painful balance spirituality and practicality you know being spiritual <laughs> That it is actually it has a lot of practical aspects to it you know being spiritual or faithful it's not just about what we believe it's also about what we do which is the practical nature of that experience and so you know you may have all of these beliefs and these ideas about what it is to be spiritual but spirit's asking you what are you doing about this you know right now you've been stuck on this person and you've been very focused on how they've hurt you and why you can't get them i do feel there's a lot of distorted energy here connected to trying to i don't know it's maybe the energy of spell work or having dabbled in something like that it's distorted it's not healthy and more than anything you're not recognizing that you're worth so much more than someone who isn't ready for you more than anything you really are worth so much more than that you need a strategy to connect to your own intuition the violet flame or the violet fire is all about healing as it says here transmutation and detoxification you know you have the power to do this through your spiritual practice and this is where it comes to that full moon in pisces balancing that spirituality and practicality you're able to be compromised if the end result is love and i think this is a really reassuring message for you you know this is reminding you that the end result will be love it might not be with this person it doesn't say but the point is is that you are you know you will love and you will be loved and you've got to stop hanging all your heart and expectations on this one person who hasn't been around for a long time there's a reason you're, they're not in your life right now in fact let's ask what, what that is <laughs> six of pentacles in reverse it's quite simple he cannot give you this person sorry it may be she they cannot give you what you deserve they don't have it in them 
as I said, they intellectualize everything. They're, they're operating completely from the ego and from the mind. They cannot connect with their heart. <clears throat> and I know it feels unfair that you're the one that has to purge and, and heal this, you know, because it wasn't your fault. You know, you didn't hurt yourself. They hurt you. Understand how painful it is. But no one's coming to rescue you. No one can do this healing or releasing or deep breathing for you. You know, nothing will come of this situation right now. It's really time for you to move past it. Now, <clears throat> when you're sad, and I do think you are very sad right now, you've really got to take care of yourself. You know, you've got to be your own doctor, your own nurse. You know, depression and, and sadness and anxiety is a disability. <clears throat> Again, I'm really feeling it in my throat. I don't know if you can hear my voice has gone croaky, but throat is about authenticity and expression. And I think a big part of, well, it went again then. Did you hear that? A big part of your discomfort and your sadness is connected to not really knowing who you really are. But as I said, you've got to take care of yourself. You know, if you broke your leg, you'd give yourself permission to rest and heal. You know, you wouldn't beat yourself up for being unable to walk or, you know, for not being able to do your usual stuff. You know, you're emotionally injured. So stop being hard on yourself and just give yourself the time and space to heal. Above all else, you've got to be kind to yourself. I do think that that running commentary in your own head is um, really sadistic, actually. You're very, very cruel to yourself. You know, the universe is reminding you, you have the ability to give over these unwanted energies, the loving forces of the universe. You're able to compromise if the end result is love and you delight in love and life and bring a spirit of fun to all you do. You know, you are enough. Enjoy is in your future. Let's get some more guidance cards around your person. What's the guidance regards them? Clearing. Some more releasing energy. <clears throat> Loss. And sacrifice. I know it's not easy, pal, too, but you've got to let them go. Let's get some message cards and charms as well. I don't want this right now. I hate lies. Compared to you, I'm a loser. You deserve so much better. These really affirm what we've already read. Why must you overcomplicate things? <clears throat> I think that comes to the oversharing stuff we were discussing. Okay, what do we have here? We have got lit. We've got the moon. We have got, I believe. Oh. We've got, oh la la. Oh, those are just the backs. And we've got the hermit crab. Okay. <clears throat> clearing a true offering arises it becomes easy to let go you start to trust that more will always arrive you shift from mine 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 to god's 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 such freedom and you've got ganesha here who clears obstacles um for those of you looking for signs by the way we've had cockroaches acorns there's two elephants here including ganesha we've had a guitar Fish, just trying to see if the dragonfly, taxi, um, yeah, a lot going on there. So clearing, you know, right now, this person is an obstacle to your joy. They don't want this right now. They are not ready for this right now. You know, this is something that you need to release. Nothing will come of this situation right now. You're holding yourself back from the joy that you deserve. You're dwelling in sadness and you don't need to be there. You're ready to heal this, to connect with your own intuition and move on. It says here with loss, and we've got the eagle, which is a spiritual messenger. Sometimes you learn through offering through loss. You make a passionate invitation for love to take over and bring her own plan instead of the egos. Now the ego wants what it wants and it thinks it can't be happy without it. That's the part of you that's in pain. 
But again, you know, learning to stand in your power puts you above the ego. It allows you to learn about who you really are and to start really trusting in the love that's available to you on the inside, which is so much bigger than you would ever dare believe. I promise you, you can find it. Sacrifice. Sometimes surrender is painful. God is cutting away all that needs to go. Illusions, obsessions, addictions. It's a sacrifice to love. You know, you have to let this go right now. It, I'm not saying it's not meant for you ever, but it's not meant for you now. You know, this person has been very clear. They don't want this right now. Compared to you, I'm a loser. You deserve better. I hate lies. And why must you overcomplicate things? You know, their own perspective is distorted. They're not coming at this from a healthy way either. They're not seeing you or your truth and you're not standing in your truth and giving them permission to see it. You think you are. But, you know, I do think that them running from you is symbolic also of you running from yourself. You know, people of perfect mirrors. Find your own light. There is light in every situation. Darkness and shadow is only the absence of light. And actually, there's always more light than darkness. You know, you can trust, but you do need to find your own light. There's two messages here about intuition with the, the moon, the crescent moon and the cats. You know, you're way more intuitive and tuned in than you give yourself credit for. There's definitely messages here about developing and encouraging that part of yourself. Come out of your shell. You know, <clears throat> think about what the crab is like. Remember, Cancerian came up, energy came up as your person's feelings. You know, hermiting is about introspection. It's also about finding home in your own heart. But the crab is also very defensive. Its shadows are deeply buried by that very tough exterior. And so, <clears throat> you know, I do feel that you're being asked to, you know, come out of your shell. And, you know, the, that introspection needs to be deeply self-reflective. There's a need for radical self-awareness here. And also some fun. You know, again, joy and willingness to compromise. There are other opportunities out there for you if you believe in them. Remember, belief is part of being. You, we co-create our own futures. Thought plus belief equals creation. And so as long as you do this Bridget Jones act by telling yourself, you know, you're always going to be alone. You're never going to meet the right person. It's never going to happen for you. Waiting around for this guy who, frankly, right now is a loser. He's not treating you right. It says by his own admission. Um you know, you're, you're really putting the brakes on your own life where there's no need to. This sadness that you're experiencing can be overcome. You have this great resilience and strength inside of you. That's how you've got this far in life. You know, cut yourself some slack. So far, you have a 100% track record of survival. So you are going to be okay. You're going to have the love that you need and want. But it's not with this person right now. You know, what you need to know about them is that they're not ready. They don't want this right now. I'm sorry, part two. It's not easy messages to deliver, but you're worth so much more than what they have to offer. As I said, you've got this big, pure heart. You know, you need to turn your attention towards your own spiritual practice and growth and intuition and psychic development. You know, now is the time for you to move forward and embrace everything that's available to you. Let's get some self-love oracle cards for you before we wrap this up. I just want to get a couple. Okay, these turned over, so let's keep those. Soul lesson, truth. Okay, throat chakra. That was the bit that was tickling me. Silent sounds and listen. You know, this is about listening to your own inner voice. The throat chakra is all about truth and authenticity. Learning to communicate and be vulnerable in who we really are. It's the number 17 card, which is the number of the star. You know, this is the one that came up in reverse the very first card out, you know, which means hopelessness, lack of faith, lack of optimism. You know, this is about finding your own soul truth. You had to go through this so you could discover who you are. Here's another ritual, sound healing. Again, throat chakra. Wow. So sound healing is the way to go. Elevate. You know, this is elevate and support. This is about your extension here. They're looking at the macabre field. This is what is being shown around them. There's actually a meditation on my channel that was released on 1212, the 1212 portal. 
connecting or activating your macabre field, perhaps this would really help you. But for sure, this is about reconnecting you to your own divinity and recognizing the support available to you through that. I am the light of my soul, third eye chakra. This is beautiful energy. We see this energy of Venus or Aphrodite here, the whales and dolphins in the background, symbolic of big love and joy. This lotus flower opening up around her, you know, symbolic of that gradual unfolding, opening up of the soul, that gradual awakening. This is beautiful divine feminine energy. It's also number 22, which reduces to four. That's about balance, stability and bringing yourself back to a place of harmony. And of course, two is connected to the energy of the high priestess, that divine feminine power of intuition. You are the light of your soul. It's in you. You know, you've got to trust your own light. You've got to believe that it's big enough and glowing enough to get you through all of this and to feel good. It's there for you. You've got to take it. I really hope that was helpful, part two. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Don't forget to join the mailing list on my website if you want to book a private reading with me. Or you can find the link on my website for the classes, How to Stand in Your Power, which is coming up. Also, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to the very generous souls that took the time to watch the adverts and commercials today. It's the perfect energy exchange. It really helps keep my channel ticking over. So thank you to those of you that do take the time to do that. I appreciate it so much. One minute of your time in return for this video works for me. Thank you. And I will see you next time. Lots of love, part two. Bye. Hello, part three. Welcome to your reading. You have chosen the Lepidolite and the Wandering Star Tarot. And we are asking today, how is your person thinking and feeling about you and this connection? What do you need to know about that so that you can move forward for your own highest good? Let's see what the cards are bringing through for you. Now, whilst I'm shuffling, please take a moment to ask the universe for a sign. Take a nice, long, deep breath. Focus on your heart center. And the goal is to ask for a sign that the universe can communicate through the cards it could be an animal it could be a flower a person's name it could be a place an object a god or goddess anything at all just trust the first thing that pops into your mind there's no right or right, wrong way to do that this just gives the universe an opportunity to communicate with you very directly you know to reassure you of which messages are meant for you um and also whilst I'm shuffling. My workshop, How to Stand in Your Power, is coming up shortly. There's still some spots available if you'd like to join. It's only £11.11 because I really wanted this class to be accessible to everyone. It's really important to me that as many people are able to learn how to stand in their power as possible. If I have one piece of wisdom to impart, it's that because I've learned to do it for myself and I want to help you learn to do the same. But let's pull some cards for you. I will also be opening for private reading soon. If you want to be in with a chance of booking, make sure you join the mailing list on my website because my booking widget is hidden on my website. It's only open, it's password protected. It's only open to people on my mailing list. And so I will be sending out an email probably within the next 24 hours um, with all the information, taking some more bookings from probably late January, early Feb. So don't miss out. But let's do this, Paul. Three. Now, I'm going to start by pulling some cards to help give us an idea of the context of the situation that you guys are in right now. Let's have a look. I've got the Page of Swords in reverse. That would suggest to me no communication. We've got the Fall in reverse. The Nine of Wands in reverse. The King of Swords. These are such beautiful, vibrant cards. And the Nine of Swords. And how's your person thinking and feeling about you, Pile 3? Two of Pentacles. Knight of Cups in reverse. The High Priestess. Queen of Swords, that's very interesting, Nick. That's come up under the king. You've got counterparts there connected to the air signs, Libra, Aquarius, Gemini, and the Seven of Cups. Now, for those of you looking for signs, just off the top of my head, of course, we've got horse, sunflowers, we've got lots of eyes here. 
um, roses and snakes. A skull. Let's get some more cards. Put those there for now. Start with the Moonology deck. We're going to use the Oracle cards and the Charms and the Message cards today as well. Okay, these are stuck together. Surrender to the Divine. Step out of your comfort zone. A new start is coming. Don't let pride get in your way. Okay, and from the Power of Love cards. Let's just move these up. That's better. Gratitude. Trust. And harmony. And from the Divine Animals Oracle. Elephant. And wolf. Okay. Okay, I want to start by saying your person is very immature when it comes to communication. They like to play games. They like to be in control. They definitely have the capacity. I'd say they're a very intelligent person. They're a big, big thinker. But when it comes to communication that requires any depth, emotion or maturity, this person checks out. Um, I feel like you've been waiting for a new beginning with this person that hasn't manifested. Um... And you've probably given up at this point. We've got the nine of wands in reverse there. That suggests to me that, you know, at this stage, you've kind of moved on. You've kind of got past it. I do feel that with the nine of swords here, and there's a lot of nines, there was a lot of pain around this at the time. You know, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of grieving um, that occurred. But we've also got the king of swords here. I remember with this queen of swords coming up beneath it, you guys still have a profoundly deep connection in the energetic realms. Um, and so it, it's it's kind of hard to, I want to say, shift them from your mind. Um, I'm hearing that you must know that they feel this too. You know, you've got the high priestess here front and center for how they feel and think about you. We've also got that queen of swords. You know, this person is very, very aware of the connection that exists between you but their feelings and thoughts they're very up and down as you can see here with this two of pentacles and with the knight of cups in reverse they're definitely not coming forward to offer you that new beginning now i want to just get some a couple of clarifiers skills i'm sure you need to understand why why well, don't they feel they can come forward okay so they already have someone they're already in a relationship, which is why that new beginning didn't happen. You know, you need to understand that this person has not forgotten about you. We've got the Seven of Cups here, which is that daydreaming card. Um, again, that high priestess that's this person. You are constantly on their mind, constantly in their heart. We've got two snakes here, which are symbolic of creation and that shedding skin kind of energy. But this person's on their own karmic path right now. I do feel like they may perhaps maintain some kind of... Um, you know, polite conversation, but the page of swords in reverse here does suggest that they're unable to engage at a deeper level. Um, and, you know, they have, there's a lot of resistance in this, you know, they're trying really hard to kind of move past this energy and to not focus on it and to not, to not be overwhelmed by it is the word that's coming through. But yeah, this person is definitely in another relationship. You have some kind of love triangle here. And yet they're definitely rooted in that connection because it's stable. It feels secure. They may be with someone that's like a childhood sweetheart. They've spent a lot of time together. Yeah, it's slow moving, boring and stable. You know, the Knight of Pentacles as a relationship is, I mean, it's the horse. So they have a lot of freedom within that connection. But it's, you know, this is a kind of mundane, unmoving energy. It's a very slow energy that's, you know, slow, plodding, but very stable. This would be that trusty old horse that can take you anywhere and will never throw you off. 
you know and so even though it's not setting their world on fire they are very comfortable where they are but you did set their world on fire and this is why that you know at the moment you're their guilty secret you're their guilty pleasure you know in the quiet moments you're the person that they think about and again you know they are definitely noticing this very intense connection to you here through that high priestess this is the energetic bond the spiritual bond that exists between you and this meeting of minds that occurred when you two came together you recognize one another in each other you know you have the masculine feminine counterpart here literally opposites polar opposites of one another but have cut from the same cloth and so this is a very soulful connection and the way it's presenting and i do think they have as i said a profound awareness of that you know surrender to the divine step out of your comfort zone and you start and don't let pride get in your way i do think you know above all else this person full moon north node where's this new start is coming don't let pride get in your way so you've got two full moons north node is where you're heading a new start is coming it's a new moon and we've got knight of wands I do think that this person does have a desire. They are thinking about coming forward. They've perhaps kept away for a certain period of time, but the Knight of Wands is a very passionate, very fruity, very flirty energy in which they're desperate to kind of, shall we say, open the door to a physical or playful interaction at least. This person at the moment, I think, is so consumed by the very thought of you that it's very difficult to actually move on. You know, you may have done a really firm job of trying to move on and trying to get past it, but deep down, you know, you both still share this bond. You're still on one another's minds quite frequently is what I'm hearing. And so I do think things are shifting. It's saying don't let pride get in your way. And I think the goal here is to be open and receptive. You know, that doesn't mean that you have to throw yourself into bed with this person or abandon your values or healthy boundaries, but it does mean to be open and receptive to how they're showing up, um, to hear them out at least. I think there's maybe gonna be an offer and again, this is the universe saying, you know, allow yourself to step out of your comfort zone because that's what they're doing and surrender this to the divine. A new start is in the future. But remember, don't let pride get in your way. Seven of Wands in reverse. Yes, see, that's a barrier is coming down and Queen of Cups, which is a mature loving energy and five of wands okay so five of wands is playfulness you know i'm going to be clear i don't think this person is showing up and staying i don't think this person is showing up and offering any profound or deep commitment but they are showing up and that there's a necessary purpose um there's a reason they're there there's there's things that need to be discussed and there's activations energetic ugh energetic activations that will occur between you as a result of these interactions which will ultimately help you grow and help you move forward <clears throat> you've got here with Ganesha and he showed up in one of our other readings I don't know if that is Ganesha actually anyway elephant here is about leadership it's the energy of number 10 and you know you're asking to let spirit lead you to let spirit be the guide don't let your ego and pride get in the way of this you're not being asked to you know put yourself in harm's way just to be open and receptive to what transpires you don't need to make any decisions you don't need to rush in into anything but you do need to keep your eyes ears and heart open to this situation and look you can see this wolf tentatively approaching here this is number 17 the energy of the star you know hopefulness it's called authenticity the lone wolf, you know, approaches someone for guidance, for support. Trust you're going to receive some vital information that's going to inform the next steps for you. You know, you may see it as opening up old wounds and kind of being painful in that way. But this card, this person's your soul family. Look at that. Happy reunions, support, order from chaos. And the ankh symbol front and centre there, that divine feminine energy, which is expansive. This is about being in your light, soul family. You know, you and this person are connected at a deep soul level. Perhaps they're your twin flame or your soulmate. There's definitely that mirror image and projection here. You are very similar to one another. But, you know, they are not available right now. What do you need to know about that? Yeah, they still haven't let go of that attachment is what I'm hearing with the devil in reverse.
and just get some more. Yeah, we've got another snake there as well and another rose. And look, this lady's wearing a mask, she's not being true to herself. I do feel like this person perhaps doesn't want to cheat either. They don't want to bring any more disrepute into their family, into their present relationship situation. It does feel like, um, and we're, we're going to get some more message cards and oracle cards as well, but it does feel like this person fights really hard to stay away. And I think you've asked them to stay away. You know, I think it feels like you've been pretty clear that if you can't show up and offer me something tangible, then, you know, I don't want to know. You need to kind of leave me alone and, and stop putting me through this, this back and forward, hot and cold, on and off, round in circles energy. I think that whilst they want what's best for you, the thought of you is too exciting. It's, they, they can't, they can't get away from that need and desire to be around you, to be with you. And so I do think you're going to hear from them. I think they're going to be reaching out. And the guidance here is to trust, to surrender to the divine and allow yourself to flow with the process. Let's get some message cards as well. Where have they gone? Okay, they're here. Okay. I'm working hard to be the person that you deserve. Your words have changed the way I see love and life. You're all my heart ever talks about, so I stopped listening. Leaving you behind broke me in ways that you wouldn't believe. Oh, do you know, up until this one, your person doesn't come across as very sentimental and I feel that they've really struggled to communicate any real depth and feeling to you. There's something, as I said, very airy, very mental, very intellectual about the pres their presentation, but they have this very deep, deep emotional soft spot for you that not many people have reached. When that card over, it's almost I felt it being touched. You know, this is what you do for them. You touch this place inside them that no one else can. And it, it, it kind of stimulates their whole sense of being. But it's also very overwhelming. And as painful as it's been for you, you know, to, to, to move away from this connection, you know, they're, they're acknowledging it's been very, very hard for them as well. That even though they may not have shown it, you know, that they miss you and they also grieve for you. To you, it may appear that they chose somebody else. You know, they chose this other person. But what they actually did was choose stability, comfort zone, safety. Um, they chose to be the good person. Is That's how they see it. They see themselves as doing the right thing for everyone else concerned. Um, and I do feel for them because it feels like a, a no-win situation for them. You know, whichever decision they made, someone was going to get hurt. That person was you. Um, but it hurt them too. And, you know, it's not about comparing their pain or, you know, suggesting theirs was any worse. Just that they wanted you to know that it wasn't easy for them. You know, they don't want you to think they're that callous and that cold and that uncaring. You know, when they walked away, it hurt. It hurt. And they are working hard to be a better person. That Your words have changed the way I see love and life. You know, this person is truly perceiving things in a completely new light as a result of the interactions, conversations and experiences you've shared, you know, and that's what you guys do. You inspire and activate one another. You bring out the best in one another, which is why the connection was so intoxicating. Um, and I do believe this person, I think, you know, they're bettering themselves in lots of unexpected ways. It's you know, this may be that they've taken up a sport or exercise that's out of character. Then perhaps they've joined a meditation class or actually started going to therapy, whereas they were previously really adverse to that. It definitely feels like they're recognising the need to take responsibility for themselves and who they are and how they show up in the world. And that's a gift that you have given them. You know, it's you that's inspired them to do that. It says here, your words have changed the way I see love and life and the gratitude you know, you fully appreciate the invaluable lessons that life lovingly presents to you. This is them appreciating what you've presented to them. You know, there's a lot of love and respect here. Trust. You have a strong connection to your soul's loving voice 
and have faith in your in your intuition and I feel that that's this strong connection they have to your loving voice that still exists within them. Again, this constant inner communication that occurs between both of you and harmony. You're able to feel a loving, balanced connection with everything. This is how they feel when they're with you. You know, that's the bit that they can't replicate, that no no other person has ever been able to, to activate within them. It's almost like you, you know, like I said, you bring out the best parts in one another. Oh, big energies. Okay, let's get some guidance cards and some charms for you as well. I'm going to go with the Divine Abundance deck. Humility. Your path. And awakening. Okay. We've got the double terminated amethyst point. We have got the I need my space. I've just got a really strong waft of lavender, you know. There's no lavender in my room. This is an I Ching coin. I don't read the I Ching. Let me see if I can get that to focus. Um, I don't know how it's... I don't know why it's not focusing. Is it, uh, come on, camera. There we go. Um, I don't read I Ching, so I'm not sure what it means, but it's it's a form of Chinese divination. Um, if you know what this means or you care to look it up, feel free. It's obviously symbolic to you. Maybe you ask for a sign connected to the energy of China. If so that's it. The I Ching is about, you know, fortune telling, divination. Um, we've got also a piece of clear quartz. So two crystals came out for you. We have got the clock which is at five past seven. We've got the acorn, um, the Game Boy, and the I love my kids. So very clear messages here from your person. Now I wanna start with the Game Boy. You know, it may feel like, I don't know why my camera's not auto-focusing, sorry about that. But the Game Boy, you know, this is why this Knight of Wands energy then showing up all flirty and fun. You know, again, don't abandon your values, principles or boundaries. You're being asked to stay aware here while still being receptive. This isn't your person showing up for commitment. And I do get the energy that they would just dive into bed with you and take what they want, given the chance. It's down to you to set that boundary and to protect that boundary. You can't be angry with people for disrespecting your boundaries. It's not their job to uphold them and to respect them. It's yours. No one can smash down your boundary without your permission. And so you've got to remember that. You know, if you you need to be able to trust yourself in this situation, not them. Okay, you need to trust yourself and you're accountable and responsible for the decisions that you make in that situation. That lovely waft of lavender. Lavender for me is all about rest and sleep. I don't know where it came from. I swear down there is no lavender in my office. And I, I can't remember the name. There's a special name for psychic smelling. I don't get it very often, but maybe again, that's a sign you asked for. But lavender is significant. Maybe you need that in your life. Now we've got the double terminated amethyst. This is a stone of psychic power the fact it's double terminated suggests the energy goes both ways and again that reminds me of this powerful and beautiful link between you that again has come up as, as a, a, an important reminder quartz amplifies the energy and this suggests to me that you really can improve the energy that exists between you by focusing on amplifying clearing and staying aligned within your own energy i need my space now is not the time for you to be having a relationship anyway, is what I'm hearing. You know, right now, we've got this seed energy with the acorn. You know, this is about your own growth. And it's reminding you that you're at the beginning of this journey towards self. This is about your awakening and your path. You know, it's not about him or I keep saying him, but it might be a her. And you've got this one here. I love my kids. You know, this person has other focus and intention right now. Doesn't mean they don't love you, but it does mean that they can't be there for you in the way that you want to be there for them and for each other. And there's, there's an energy of acceptance needed around that. You've got to trust in divine timing, surrender to the divine. Now is not the right time. Humility. 
Allow me, divine, to always accept the right assistance. I welcome your help in every way and delight in receiving it. You know, trust. You've got to trust. You've got to trust in what the divine's trying to do for you. We've got this wise owl sitting here to accept the right assistance. I welcome your help in every way. Now, even if you're not able to communicate with, hear or see your guides, you've got to remember they're always there. And when you're sending your wishes out into the universe, they're always going to be heard and reacted to. You will always get what's meant for you and what you need the most. And that not, may not always look like what your ego asked for. You know, this is about being open to receiving whatever's meant for your highest good, your highest potential, your highest timeline. We don't always know what that looks like, even though we think we do. So don't become disheartened if you don't get everything you ask for. You know, this is the universe reminding you that, you know, the way to grace i want to say grace is the word that come up is different for everyone and it says here dear lord help me trust that there's a plan far beyond what i can see through my fears and illusions and that's really significant you know that really affirms what we just said there is more going on here that you couldn't possibly comprehend yet because it's so detailed so complex and so rooted in um your own destiny, your own fated path, which could not possibly be fully known yet. You know, you are moving in the right direction, even though it may not feel that way. Awakening. Oh, my Lord, wake me from life as a spiritual sheep. May I hear you through my own instincts and common sense. You know, this is about learning to trust yourself that's what i'm hearing and the swallow comes through here for you and the cow but i'm hearing trust thine own self trust thine own self i don't know why they're saying it in that shakespearean language but you've got to learn to trust yourself this is about returning to your own truth integrating your own sense of authenticity you know reconnecting with the soul family that's within you rather than focusing externally on this person you know, you are the divine light. You know, you have this power. There's a connection between you that you can amplify when you reconnect yourself and trust in your path rather than, you know, trying to force it down a route that wasn't meant for you. I really hope that was helpful, Pile 3. Please let me know in the comments below. I love to hear your feedback. And I just want to say a very special thanks as well to those of you that hit the like button and watch my commercials and adverts today. It really does help my channel tick over. I can't tell you how much it means to me. Thank you so much. It's the perfect energy exchange. And I'm so, so grateful that you spend your time that way and that you share this space with me. So thank you for being here. Hopefully I'll see you at my class on the 15th of January or perhaps at a private reading. Don't forget to check out my website. It's happysouls1111.com and I will see you next time. Lots of love, Pile 3. Bye.